JB Cycles here with a bonus video for this weekend. So, uh, cycles on Sunday. You know, I have hundreds of old spreadsheets and I forget to update them and I forget to look at them. And once in a while I have to, uh, to look back on what do I have forgotten. So, today, today I'm just looking a bit on cycles. So here we have the S&P. And in red, I have the seven year cycle. So, you know, I've drawn a gen general uh, expectation here for, for the S&P with an analog from the previous bull market top. So I think we are approaching the bull market top and we should have, we should be dropping down uh, into early summer, bouncing up in the summer and then making a low in the fall. And that is, should be, I think, the, the A move of the bear market. Then we should have a bounce in the winter and then the C down uh, next year. So, but um, let's start having a look at uh, the seven year cycle here in, in red. And um, of course, uh, I should have disabled the auto saving in this program. It, it always starts auto saving at the worst possible moment. So, well, here we are. So, let's focus here on this first top in the seven year cycle. So, uh, um, the seven year cycle uh, is has been quite stable for like 70 years or more, but um, it's not that stable going further back. It, it, it tends to, it, it can shift uh, by three and a half years. Uh, so, you know, the seven year cycle could change, but the three and a half year cycle is always there. But let's have a look at this top in the three and a half year cycle, excuse me, seven year cycle. You see, we have this kind of a double top here. So this uh, bull market was kind of very strange. It topped out very early and, and had a very short duration. So, but that was early in the 28 year cycle where the overall condition is very bullish. So this next one, in around 69 we see yeah it topped out in this interval and you know you may think oh the seven year cycle it can be scary but this low in the middle can't possibly be, be, be scary but uh, yeah you can see here here we dropped quite uh, deep down in 1970 so watch out and, and this is a very similar point in the um, in the 28 year cycle. So going the, over to the next one, again we see this one topped a little bit later than this interval. And we go to 1983, yeah, we topped around this interval. In 1990, again, yeah, we topped uh, out here, but you know, hardly any bear market at all. You probably wouldn't define it as a bear market, but it's a three and a half year cycle low. And that is per definition a bear market to me. And well, I'm totally skipping this one in 90, what is it, 97-ish. You know, the top was very late in 1998 and we had a crash in 98, but you hardly see it in the S&P. Many other markets really crashed in 98. If we go to 2004, you see, hardly any, well, no bear market at all. Here it was more like a sideways cycle low. But again, we topped out at this interval. And here we topped out at the interval in 2011. And we see, yeah, kind of topped out there in 2018. So now we are there again. And as you see, this interval goes from around January and into uh, June, around June. So, you know, this is the, the yellow topping part of the three and a half year cycle. And we can top out any time here. So, I have some other stuff. You know, this is a cycles composite of many cycles. I have listed them here. And as you see, this one has um, top let's see oh we are getting close it's mid-march 
Yeah, well, that's interesting. That, you know, I wouldn't trust this. It's more like we are approaching a big top, but I wouldn't trust these turning points. But uh, yeah, interesting to see that. Let's go on further. You know, the, well, here we have a the S and P weekly. Here I have a, a band of offsets. So typically. Breaking below this is very dangerous, but we can tip, often we will find support at this band. And here we see we actually broke below it, but we never capitulated. We clinged onto it, and then we broke out and rallied. So you know, I think this will be the critical point. I could also put in this um, trend line from the bear market lows. Uh, and well, I think this is the primary target for this first leg down. Also, if we extend this moving average, you see it all ends up here in the fall around October. And if we were to, you know, that would be a soft landing in my opinion. That's about 20% down now, I think. So let's say we bounce up from the from a panic low in the fall, and then the big question is, you know, um, is the is it over or is it just beginning? So if we kind of make, let's say we we break down somewhere here, you know, we could have a projection of a downside. So. This first downside target is around the S&P 5000, so down about a thousand points, and we could break down further with a lower next year, another thousand points down to 4000. So that would be down about 30, 35 percent. But you know, it's also possible we can can go lower. So, but um, <laughs> everything's possible here. You know, in 1970, we, we went all the way down to the previous lows. We could go down and test the 2022 lows. It's even possible. And we are, you know, the 28-year the cycle is topping. It's, turn, it's turning bearish for the next 10 years. So uh, the risk is to the downside now. <coughs> and also I have, um, I have the um, three and a half year cycle two week data this is the wavelet and the wavelet has topped out actually 18 uh, periods ago that's 18 times two weeks that's 36 weeks ago so that turning point is starting to get trustworthy because you know this wavelet will change for for every new data point the wavelet can change especially if we suddenly drop or rally the the, the turning point can shift to right or left but I have a projection now as we have this turning point. So, using data for a uh, hundred years of S&P data, I get this. You know, here at point zero, the wavelet is turning down. And what does the, the S&P do after such a turning point? Well, it continues up for well around 20 times two weeks, around 40 weeks after it tops out, and then in the the projection or the expectation is generally sideways or down uh, for another 40 weeks times 2 that's 80 weeks and where are we now this is where we are here in red so we see the average behavior of S&P after such a turning point in the wavelet is well we are in the interval of topping stretching all the way into mid april <coughs> and then the expectation is sideways down into say yeah september october next year would be my best guess but you know we could rally a, start a rally earlier and also if we were to turn down a steeply going down here the wavelet signal could change so you know it is although it looks like we are here the wavelet could change and suddenly if we were to crash down it could change its mind and say no we were actually here i should simulate that and test what uh, yeah but uh, that's for today and see you later